Hello and welcome to the Literary Bar. How are you doing? In the midst of our current challenges in Nigeria, I want to highlight the Chinese concept of yin and yang. Do you know that crisis in Mandarin is actually a combination of two words, disaster and opportunity? That is a yin and yang of life, which is about finding a balance between the positive and negative experiences of life. My guest today is a very special woman who, when faced with the challenge of raising a child with cerebral palsy, saw an opportunity to acquire skills, to assist her child, and also help other children living with similar severe disabilities. Our conversation today is going to be emotional, so grab your drink and a box of tissues and see you after the break. Caregiving is one of the most important jobs in the world. Everyone needs care and assistance at some point in their lives. Caregivers are underpaid and mostly unappreciated in this side of the world. Amazingly, most Nigerians who jackba see caregiving as the fastest way to earn a living. But we know that caring for the vulnerable, mentally and physically challenged, and the elderly is a lot of emotionally draining work. Recently, the United Nations set aside October 29th to honor the men and women who have devoted their lives to caring for others. My guest today, Noyemweke, is the founder and the chief vision officer of Cerebral Palsy Center, CP Center, Lakowe, Nigeria. Founded in 2010, CP Center is her response to the absence of specialized care facilities for children living with cerebral palsy in Nigeria. Noye is a mother to her adopted daughter, Zim, who is living with spastic quadriplegia. She's also the primary caregiver to her 90-year-old mother, falsely called Mama Noye. Noye holds a degree in science education and a diploma in journalism, a certificate in social sector management from the Enterprise Development Center of the Pan-African University. She is the chairperson of International Cerebral Palsy Society, ICPS. After the break, we're going to go into our conversation with Noye from her book titled Chizimuzondu about her daughter. Welcome back. If you're joining us, this is going to be an emotionally charged conversation with our friend Noye, I call her a special woman, which is a fantastic super lady who is so caring. Noye, welcome to the Literary Bar. Thank you very much, Chinedi. How are you? I'm good. How are your people? They're fine. They're fine. They're <laughs> Zim fine. and Mama Noye. <laughs> <laughs> They're all fine. They're all fine. So, Noye, um, I met you. No, before I met you physically, you were running one of the best bakeries in Suruleri, Delicante. Yeah. Your bread That's was true. really something, and those cakes, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the business closed down, and something replaced that. What's that? Well, the business didn't close. I closed down the business, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because I needed to do, you know, as they say, something has to die for something to grow. So um, I had to close down the business to start a center for children with cerebral palsy because of my daughter. Yes. Because I couldn't find a place to manage her. So I have to create that. You know, as they we, say, yeah. you can't find what you're looking for. You create it. So you create it, yes. But before we go straight, the title of your book is Chizu Muzando. It's yeah. titled after your daughter. Mm. You adopted Zim. Yeah. How old was she? And, and what was the story? Okay, Zim was uh, six days when she was given to me for adoption. Yeah. I don't know her story about, you know, you know how mm -hmm. adoption is shrouded mm -hmm. in secrecy in Nigeria, maybe until recently. But I just know that, you know, I needed a baby. They adopted through Oweri, through the mm -hmm. ministry. She was six days when she was given to me. And uh, at five months, she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Wow. And um, knowing what so I knew. So from that six days to five months, mm -hmm. Did she look different from other if babies? If I knew what I know now, mm -hmm. of course, I would have known the moment I picked her that something was wrong because 
she was seizuring, which I didn't know, which I thought was an exhibition of strength. Okay. You know, like she seizures. Okay. So she was having, you know, what we call infant spasms. She would go into spasms. And um, she, she had difficulty in uh, sucking, mm -hmm. you know, giving her, um, mm -hmm. giving her a feeding, feeding bottle. Yeah. yeah, it was difficult for her. So I didn't know why. And uh, there were so many things that were off. By the time she was opening her eyes, her, she were, her eyes were squinted, badly squinted. And uh, as I noted that at three, four months, she wasn't uh, holding up her neck. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from baby books. Yes, all uh, those milestones. Yes, all yes. those milestones. I didn't have a child to compare her with because I didn't have any pregnancy before. But from the baby books, you know, you have this baby book you read. Mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't doing what she was supposed to be doing, like holding up her mm -hmm. neck. I understand that African children or babies from age three months, they should yes, hold from up three their months, neck. Yes. Yeah. But she didn't do that. Uh, at four months, she wasn't. By five months, she should be sitting, mm -hmm. ideally. But she wasn't. Um, no eye contact. You know, your baby wasn't looking at. Wouldn't look at you, uh, and uh, you didn't get those smiles. But uh, I wasn't kind of worried. Uh, but at three, four months, I got worried. Then I went to a doctor. I remember going to high fine, and I said, "Hi, fine. How far this my baby? C C C." And she said, uh, "It's at no, you Don't worry. That is from six months. Doctors start getting worried." But in retrospect, mm -hmm. my older friends knew because I used to take her to my friends. You know, uh, Sundays. But they didn't say anything. They didn't, you know, we have a culture of silence. They didn't say anything. But then what, could, what, what difference would they have made anyway? So they didn't say anything. But by the fifth month, I was worried. I, went, I remember going home to my parents. Then my father was still alive. And uh, I expressed my concern to my mother. And she mm -hmm. said uh, that it was because she wasn't breastfed. And I said, it's OK. But she was quite slow. And uh, there were so many things. Uh, and I remember that uh, uh, there was a nurse that saw us, you know, coming home. I used to call her my father's girlfriend, you know, mm -hmm. the nurse that used to take care of my dad, you know, uh, because then my father was, wasn't quite well. So she was one that used to go to my father, you know, you know how, how could they could be when he's not taking medication. Once mm -hmm. he come, once she came in, she will, my father will respond. So we used to call her my father's girlfriend. And I remember seeing her and she saw my baby and I, and she, the question she asked me, did this baby have jaundice? Hmm. I didn't. I, mean, I didn't know what was jaundice, and I said no. That I wasn't told. Of course, she knew something was wrong, and she said, "Well, that I'm not carrying her properly, you know, because her neck was still lagging and all that." So that was October. I'm thinking that was like eight years ago, October. So I. She I, was. She was about five months. Yeah, now. about five months. Yes. So I when I got, I told my mom. My mom wasn't worried. Then something happened. I, we came in on Wednesday. We were supposed to come back to Lagos on Sunday. And then, and on Friday night, I fell ill. I started having stomach ache. Mm -hmm. You know, then which resulted to they are taking me to the hospital, you know, the village hospital. I was just throwing up, throwing up. And um, by Sunday, I just knew I was, as if I was going to die in the mm -hmm. hospital. So I left my baby. Uh, no, I took her. And went to worry, you know, where I could see a big hospital, and I checked into FMC. So they did scan and everything. So by Monday, they found out that I had intestinal obstruction. So my baby had to go back to my mom with the house girl I got. So I was in the hospital. They had to do a surgery. You know, it was an emergency. They had to do a surgery and everything. So all through each time, I called my mom. How is this baby? How is my baby? She held up her neck, and my mother would say, "Don't worry." Anyway, when I go home. The moment I go home, you know, you know, you know, sometimes you need to remove yourself mm -hmm. out of a situation to see it better. Yeah. So when I got home that day, it was in the evening, my mom was beating her. And I said, Mama, this child is not well. Though. You know, I was seeing mm -hmm. her, but then she wasn't getting to, she was mm -hmm. five months plus, mm -hmm. and I was like, this child is not well. And she said, don't be, there's nothing that she, she, she took her to, to, to see the, the nurse because you know you know the you know those multivitamins they mm -hmm. give them as, yeah. as babies and I had finished I didn't plan so I had told her to go to the lady and get some then she took her there the nurse didn't say anything you know she you know she was happy a grandma so she put the baby in the can be driving all over so and I said no that's I'm sure something's wrong mm -hmm. so that night she drove me to see the nurse and we came in and she told her that. Uh, I'm worried, about, I'm concerned about this baby. I'm, she has told me there's nothing to worry about. 
So the, the nurse now asked me, do you remember the question I asked you the day, you know, mm -hmm. I saw you came? Because usually when I come, I go to her first. Do you remember the question? I said, yes, she asked me. She said, she didn't talk to me anymore. She now talked to my mom. She was talking to my mother now. She said, ah, eh, she, she knows the child of so, 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 and so. The child of so, 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 and so. Eh, that is the child that will turn out like that and everything. Anyway, in retrospect, she was describing Down syndrome because okay. she was, and you know what I know now. You know, for them, all the disabilities are almost the same. Because she was saying that one that, you, that normally stays at the gates mm -hmm. and all that. She was, you know, naming some children, telling my mom. So I knew immediately that something was wrong. So, but I didn't know how severe. So the next day was a Monday, and I told my mom I would take my daughter to, to see a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. So I asked her if there's a pediatrician around. She said, um, Newe or Oka. Then I said, why don't I go to Oweri? I'm, I'm just coming from there, and I adopted from Oweri. So I called my brother, and I went to Oweri. My brother was in Oweri back then. So I, then I called the Reverend Sister. You know, there was a child I fostered with them, a child whose mom died, and mm -hmm. I fostered. I met the child. I met the woman mm -hmm. in the hospital. Mm -hmm. She had cancer, and she was dying. And her concern was what would happen to her baby. And I couldn't take the baby, so I had to foster the baby with the Reverend Sisters. So I called those Reverend Sisters, and, they, and they, she gave me a name of the hospital, over a sick bay. So I went there. I thought, you know, I packed a nice bag, thinking that it's something that will just go, they treat us, and we will go home. And I went in there, and the, and the doctor, when it was at 10, you know, she, you know, she was all spastic like this. So the doctor just pulled her, her arm. And she said, Madam, what's happened? This child has cerebral palsy. Wow, just like that? Yeah, just like that. And I said, I couldn't even pronounce cerebral palsy. And she was like, what's that? She said, CP, that this child was resuscitated at birth. Wow. What happened? I said, I, I wasn't at birth. That um, she's adopted. He got angry. Why could they give a child like this for adoption? Um, they're not supposed to give out a child like this for adoption. Where did you adopt from? I said, from a worry. Incidentally, from where I was not she said ah, that through, through the ministry, he said ah, they usually bring babies for him to our sites. So, so, okay, let me ask you first, yeah. what is cerebral palsy for people who don't actually understand? understand? Well, cerebral palsy, knowing what I know now, simply put, it's a result of an accident okay. that happened at the part of the brain. Okay. Usually the cortex, the biggest part of the brain. And this is the part that controls balance, muscle, and posture. Hence, you see the children, they don't have balance, they're not able to see. Is it sit congenital or is it it's congenital. Okay. It could happen after birth too. Okay. So, uh, recently, there is, uh, you know, how scientists do, uh, you know, how they behave. So recently, there's, uh, they're trying to say that's not exactly congenital because sometimes it happens after birth. Postpartum. Yes, postpartum, like, uh, like jaundice, like um, meningitis. So, it be, it, so it's as a complication of an untreated of an, yes. uh, situation. Situation, and it's permanent. Sadly, oh, wow. it's permanent. No, there's no care. Once it's happened, it has happened. Okay, now let yeah. me come back to you. You now realize that you, you've adopted a child. With cerebral yeah, palsy. With cerebral palsy. This child is not biologically yours. No, she's not. And I can imagine people saying, take her back now, it's... It's a defective no, really, product. The doctor already mm -hmm. said I should take her back to where I adopted her from. Like, like, yeah, a, you know, a piece of I, when I remember the doctor, you know, he's, you know, he was like, just take her back. And then he just picked up his notepad and he wrote something and gave me to take to the ministry because, you know, he so knew. So can replace the yes, products. Can, yes, yes, that's just it. So, and I go to the ministry, I met this woman, Mrs. Madu. She was the one in charge in that, of that unit then. And I came in, I gave, you know, I was crying already, so I gave her the paper, she read it, and she said, that's your, madam, you can't manage this child. You know, and she asked, what of your husband? I said, look at my file, now I'm separated. Then my, 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 my divorce hasn't come through, so my, I'm, I'm separated, look at my, my file, she look at my file. You saying was that your case, ex part of your adoption process? No, she, no he, he wasn't. He wasn't, no, okay. he wasn't. So, and, he's, and she said, ah, in that case, you can't even manage a child like this. Just leave her. We'll arrange for What of your family and your friends? What did they say? Well, at that point in time, so I would tell you, so, so that was a Friday, I remember correctly. So I left her because she insisted, she insisted I must leave her, that I can't. So I left her. I had a bag, I had her bag, so I left her with the bag. Then I go home. I, of course, I stopped again to see the nurse. I told her, and she said, um, 
And she said, ah, that's the best thing to do. I said, no, it's not the best thing to do. That's, I was going to Lagos. You know, I was sure that when I get to Lagos, mm -hmm. I'll find a solution. You already had formed the bond with this child? Yes, I, I had. But then that was, I don't know, you know, I don't even see it in the sense that, you know, it's because I formed a bond with mm -hmm. her. But I saw her like, you know, she came, I, she came into my life after my separation. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, a, a woman, you are in that state where you, you know, you have this vacuum. Mm -hmm. And she now came in and she filled your life with so much love. Now is just time. Okay, she has this condition. You're not going to leave her. You know? And besides, it's not like, you know, I bought this shirt and it's a yellow one. I'm like, mm. I think a green one mm. should have been better. Yeah. Can I? But oh, there's a little stain. Let me yeah, take it back. Let me take it back. So it was because they were saying they will replace, they will get me another baby. Mm. So I went home, but they didn't know why I left. You know, they thought I've gone and I've gone. So when I came to Lagos, I remember going to my friend Daphne, you know, of course, my siblings, my, my family, they were like, whatever decision you want to take, that's fine. You know, in fact, I remember my sister, you know, about three of them are medical doctors. So they, I didn't even know the severity. I didn't even understand. But all I know is that they said that. But they were, they knew, some of them have seen the future. They were like, okay, there is no decision that is easy. Leaving her is not going to be easy because you will always like think what's happened to her. Taking her is not, is not going to be easy, but whatever. Stand you take, we are right here with you, so that was fine. But my friends, not even one, all of them, but I don't hold it against them. All of them were like, just leave her now, yeah, think of the future. In fact, it still rings in my head, and when I look at her, when I look at my back, it's aching, you know, lifting, and everything. I'm like, oh, this is the future they were warning me, oh, yes, <laughs> you know, for, yeah, can imagine. because they knew. So, but, but I was like, no, I mean, she's my daughter. I mean, if if I bested her, mm -hmm. will I? through her yes, way. Yes, yeah. So I took her back. So so Monday, so by that weekend, my friend Daphne had taken me to a place where they manage children like that. Hmm? I don't want to call the name. But she took me there. It was off at then. I know where the place, but we're not called okay, the yes. <laughs> So when I got there, I, I told her my mm -hmm. problem and everything. She said, okay, fine, I should bring her. All I needed was where I can take her to and go to work. My mm -hmm. shop was in Body Thomas. And she was on a good side, so which was okay. So I even took her flyers. Mm -hmm. So I called the wearing Monday morning that I was coming for my baby. They said, you don't have a baby. I said, no, you have my baby. Mm -hmm. That's the same one. That's my baby. They said, I said, yes, I'm coming for her. Because they were not sure I would manage her. So mm -hmm. I took that flyer from, the, you know, from that place so that I can show them mm -hmm. that I'm making arrangement to manage. My, and I'm already thinking of how to manage her. You know, I, I'm, I don't like... I like to cry when I have mm -hmm. issues, but when I cry, I don't cry so that I'm not looking for solutions. Yeah. So I, so I took the, the flyers with me and I, I flew to work. Now I'm in a hurry. I didn't back then. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't go by road, so I went by air because I was in a hurry. So I, when I got there, you know, and um, so I waited for them to go get my baby. I waited. I waited. You know, I went to my brother first. He gave me a car. It took a while. You know, they had to go to the orphanage to go and bring her. You know, they passed me. I didn't recognize my daughter. She oh. was with them less, barely one week. And, you know, they had removed her hair. You know, I, I did her hair. They were wearing her rubbish, rubbish. <laughs> you know, the clothes we were wearing her. So when I asked, where is her? They said, okay, they've taken her to the office. I went in there. I was looking at her. Wow. So this, this I just... tells a lot of how yes, children yes. yes. so, are, are handicapped. Yes. So I said... I brought a bag. Why is she wearing this dress? Mm -hmm. I brought a bag. Where is the bag? The woman just did like this. The bag was still. They didn't even take it out of the office. So wow. she, which was good. So she gave, me, gave that to me. She was wearing cloth diaper. I just peeled off everything she had. They were just watching me like film like this. So I peeled off all the things, removed the cloth diaper, picked the diaper from her bag, picked a, a dress from her dresser. Then I quickly searched the side of the bag. I had left a gold earring mm -hmm. in, the, in the side, you know, just something. So it was still there because they didn't open it. So I took my baby and I went away. Wow. So I came back to Lagos. It was a Friday. Then I couldn't wait for Monday. So Monday I was coming to work. Then I branched to the woman's place with her packed bag food and everything to give her. And she said, she didn't, she stopped speaking. She didn't speak English anymore. She was speaking Yoruba to her staff. They shouldn't let me leave this child here. <laughs> Why now? Can you use those words? <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. something like this. My shake of your mercy, you know, something like that. You know, I don't speak over, but I understand it. Yeah. So she wouldn't let me leave the baby. So, okay. So I took my baby. 
So I didn't know what to do with my baby again. Okay. She, she wouldn't take her because she saw how yes, severe her severe, disability yes. was. And she wasn't even up to a year this time. No, she was five months. She was five months. This was November, you know, getting to, uh, to Christmas, getting to December. So, and in retrospect, we are friends now, mm -hmm. many ladies. She said, because many mothers have brought kids like this and they I will run them. away. It's, right. It's a lot. So, that's and there's right. really no support for those for mothers. Yes. So, yes. There's no support for those families. Fam and secondly, for the organization. I run a good organization now, so I know. Yes. So, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. You know, we'll get to how cheesy moves on What does it mean? Chizimu Zondi means God show me the path of life. Yes. Yes. I, I didn't know she has this issue when I gave her the, the you know, the name. But, you know, you know, sometimes you name your baby even before you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You yes. You say name yes. you like it. So before I met her, or because, you know, like I said, I just separated. Mm -hmm. I was running this business that was eating me up. You know, mm -hmm. you know running a restaurant. Yes, you know. yeah. So, and I just needed this. I wasn't even sure it was the right thing to do. Because okay. I remember the day I was called that there was a baby. I said I wasn't ready. Hmm. I said, look, called her. They said, no, there's no baby. I'm not ready. Say, ah, better be ready because maybe when you are ready, there won't be baby. That's okay. It's actually interesting yeah. when um, a single woman opts for adoption at that time. Now it's getting a bit more popular, mm. you know. And one wonders, why would you go for a baby when there's okay. no husband? Yes, because for, for me, I knew that, like I said, I had a vacuum. And, you know, when, when not having a baby, was that part of why... You had to separate Usually, something like that. Something like that. Something like yes. that. Okay. But you see, when 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 you are young, and when you separate, or when you divorce, you know, it's like for me, I didn't want a situation where any man would come and talk to me. I wasn't ready for that. And then, and one of the ways is just have a baby because most men don't have, don't want that. <laughs> so that for me, so you just wanted. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So wait. Uh, no, we're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, we'll go into. How Zimu Zondu led you to the path, path. of the CP okay. Center. I will not forget conversations with Mama. Okay. A very lovely excerpt from the book. Okay. So please um, join us after the break and Noya will tell us more about her center and how her daughter led her to this path that is changing the lives of people living with cerebral palsy. See you after the break. Welcome back. You're still on to the Literary Bar. And today we're talking about an amazing woman who is taking care of her beautiful daughter, Chizimu Zondu. Chizimu Zondu is the inspiration behind the book that we're talking about today. Not just that Noya is taking care of a child that has severe challenges, she's also taking care of her very inspirational 90-year-old mother. That's it for now. Part 2 of the interview with Noye will continue next week. Do stay tuned.